Hello again, everybody. In this video, we're going to write down a few properties of continuous functions uh, in the spirit of the properties that we've written down for sequences and series and for limits. We're going to start with what we'll call the algebraic continuity theorem. So this should look pretty much like all the other algebraic theorems we've written down, uh, but it's good to record this. So the algebraic continuity theorem. So let's see, for this we're going to start with two functions. So we'll have an f and a g. Say they have a common domain d, and they're just mapping into the reals. Uh, we'll take some, I don't know, how about we use alpha today for some constant in the real numbers. All right, so now what we're going to do is assume that we know that uh, we have some point at which both f and g are continuous. So if a is in d, such that f and g are continuous at a, then, okay, so what needs to happen? So first, we're going to have this homogeneity property. Okay, only the homogeneity now, like there's nothing coming out uh, so much, is simply if I multiply this function f by a scalar alpha, then this product function is still continuous at a. Okay, so a continuous function, once you scale it, stays continuous. All right, what if I add f and g together? Okay, this is sort of like the additivity rule. Well, this is still continuous at a. Of course, there's nothing particularly special about addition, multiplication, subtraction, those work as well. Uh, we won't have to write the subtraction down, but we'll write the multiplication here. And then the third, as you can imagine, we'll have to do with division. But then, of course, we have to add some extra condition so that we don't end up kicking a puppy, i.e. we don't divide by zero. So the quotient is continuous at A, provided that G of A itself does not equal zero. Okay, that wouldn't be allowed. Okay. Now, I'm not going to prove this here. The, uh, the proofs are coming uh, in the homework, and, and they're really just coming down to utilizing uh, the limit properties uh, the, already the, that you already know, right, and the definition of continuity. Uh, I do want to write down one more uh, theorem here. Uh, I, I wanted to actually add it as kind of a fourth part, but the, the hypotheses change slightly, and so it makes sense to actually write down this next theorem, as its own, uh, as its own uh, property. So this theorem says that compositions of continuous functions are continuous. All right, so uh, most of the difficulty here is in setting up all the notation, not in uh, actually you know, writing this down. So we're going to assume f is some function with domain d, and g is going to be some function with domain e. And we're going to assume that the image of f is actually contained in e. So even though the codomain of f is r, Right? The actual range of f, the actual values we get, are all contained in E. And this is all done just so that it makes sense for us to write down, well, we write it down like this. So you have uh, f goes from d to, well, it's supposed to go to r, right? but we even can think about the restricted map into f of d, which is contained in r. And this is contained in E which then can map onto R via G, okay? So everything in D, I can map it into E and then into to R. And so I get this compo uh, composite map, which is denoted G composed F. All right, so if A is in D and F is continuous at A, 
and okay this is kind of a bad sentence here because there's so many ands so let's put a comma uh, and g is continuous at f of a okay so i start with some a and d i map it over into f of d right so it's the element f of a which is now in e and then i can map that to g of f of a Okay, and G is continuous at this F of A, F was continuous at A. The conclusion is that the composition map, G composed F, is continuous at A. Okay, remember G composed F actually starts at D itself. All right, so again, I'm leaving this as a, uh, a proof for the homework, uh, but I want to now use these properties and show how the the, the seemingly very basic stuff we did a couple of uh, lectures ago where we proved that the constant function is continuous on all real numbers and the identity function is continuous on all real numbers so those were were fairly straightforward proofs not a lot to them but now when we couple them with these algebraic limit properties and this composition uh, property we can actually do quite a bit with it. So let's do an example here. Um, I want to define f of x to be x cubed minus 2x squared plus 3x plus 1. And for the purposes of this example, let's just assume that we know that f is an increasing function. Okay, of course, we can, can prove that later, but I just want to assume that we actually have somehow established that this function is, is increasing for all x. Okay, and then I want to compose f with a square root function so that I end up with the square root of x cubed minus 2x squared plus 3x plus 1. Right, so this is the square root of f of x. And I claim that g is continuous for all x at least 0. All right. So let's make this argument. Uh, well, let's see. First, we know that f is increasing. Okay, We assume that. And f of 0, that's easy enough. I just plug in 0. It kills the first three sum ends. I just get a 1. So that means that once I get past 0, so f of x is going to be greater than 0 for all x greater than or equal to 0. Because it's 1 at some point, and then it just keeps increasing. So it's certainly going to be positive uh, once we get to 0 and past. OK, so what does that mean? Uh, it means that it actually makes sense to compose f with the square root function. All right? I, I'm getting positive uh, outputs that I put into the square root, so it actually makes sense. So, um, so this implies that the non-negative reals uh, are contained uh, in uh, well, no, non-negative reals, but f of the non-negative reals are contained in the domain of uh, the square root function and hence of g. Okay, uh, fine. Now, I know that if I take any constant function, so for example, the constant function 1, it's continuous. So uh, if I had some function like h of x is equal to 1, h is continuous actually at all x. Okay, fine. I also know that if I have a k of x equals x, then k is continuous. Okay, so these are the two things we've actually proved. And this is at all x. All right, but now if I use, so using algebraic continuity theorem, I know that if x is a continuous function, I can multiply it by any scalar I like 
and I get that 3x is continuous. So x continuous implies 3x is continuous. Okay, but also, since x is continuous, I know that x times x, both x and x are continuous, and our algebraic continuity theorem says if you multiply two continuous functions, it'll still be continuous. So x times x is going to be continuous. Of course, I could also multiply by, say, negative 2. So this implies negative 2x squared, okay, because that's what x squared is, is continuous. Okay, but if I know that x times x is continuous, I also know that I can multiply by another x, and that will be continuous. And so x cubed is continuous. All right, and of course we also had 1 was continuous. And so now if I put this all together, right, and we all write it over here, 1 is continuous, I know by, again, the algebraic continuity theorem, if I add continuous functions, they stay continuous. And so if I put these all together, I get that x cubed minus 2x squared plus 3x plus 1 is continuous. So just doing these couple of very simple proofs, I'm able to, you can see, get any polynomial I like to be continuous, just from just 1 and x. Okay, so that's really nice. Okay, but we already showed in the previous video that the square root function is continuous. So the square root function is continuous. And so then, by our second theorem, showing that compositions of continuous functions are continuous, this implies that the square root of x cubed minus 2x squared plus 3x plus 1 is continuous, because I'm composing two different continuous functions. And there we go. And of course, this was our g. All right. So as long as this made sense, and it does when x is at least 0, we have continuity. OK, that's enough for this video. In the next video, we're going to uh, prove that whenever you have a continuous function and an open set in the range, and you take a preimage of it, you will get an open set, which is a nice, another nice characterization of continuity. All right, we'll see you next time.